Thanks for joining. We're going to take a look at the heat map add-on that comes bundled with FileMaker 19. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. A heat map is a data visualization tool that uses a grid to show a large amount of data in a small amount of space. Each cell in that grid represents something, and the color of that cell represents a value or a range of values. And this makes recognizing relationships and patterns much more easy. Now you have probably seen a heat map in action. I mean, literally, like in an action movie, if you've ever seen the Predator franchise. When the Predator switches to thermal mode, he's literally using a heat map. With the screen being a grid, each pixel being a cell, and each color representing a range of temperature. But that grid can represent many other things. In our situation, the grid is a calendar, and the colors represent record counts. You could view the calendar heat map as a widget for a record count summary report. Here we have a report. It's sorted by date. And over here is a summary field of the count of the records. So we see that on Monday, April 6th, there are 16 events. And if we select our window and then we hover, we see that there are 16 events. I have populated this with data that friends volunteered of their Netflix viewing habits. So what we have here is an interactive infographic of binging habits. And if we move through this data, we can quickly see that April was an outlier. That while each month had certain days of binge watching, April was really the dense month. Now, if we click on this, we could see the show that is being watched. So it looks like they started the day off watching some Claws and then the B-movie and then some anime, followed by some Ozark. And then that must not have been very great because they went back to this anime show. But with this short example, you can see the benefits of this right away. It's a very quick way to get in and see what's going on. Now, out of curiosity, on Friday, it looks like there was an awful lot of the television show Lucifer was watched. And if we want to see how often was Lucifer watched, we can type that into the query field. And we see, well, looks like that was um, isolated to some very intense binge watching on April. As we go through our data, Lucifer is not listed in other months. Supernatural is a popular show. Let's see what the viewing habits for that show are. Well, we see there's a lot of viewing activity on this day. And then not a lot for a little while. And then maybe this is the kind of show where they've already seen them and they just watch them periodically. Just with those two examples, you can see how a date heat map is useful for indicating patterns. That's just something that we can all relate to. In a business setting, things like overtime or tardies, incidents or errors or undercounts or overcounts. You could also use this with log files, setting your query up with a value list of known error codes. And you could see what the frequency of error codes were on particular days. So let's go in and look at our configuration. Our required fields will come in pre-populated with the sample data. The event detail layout needs to be the layout that will be displayed in the card window when a user clicks on a date. And then in that layout, we need to have a date field that we're going to group around. And our filter settings will come in with the event of the sample data. But this needs to be any searchable field. You could make this a field that aggregates other fields together to increase the number of terms you can search on. And the query field will come in empty. And in order for this to be available, it needs to be on the layout. The query field is located, if we look at our schema, it's in the table heat map, and it's simply a global field. In our settings, we have the option of starting the week on Sunday or Monday, we'll leave it on Sunday. And then we have the styles of our date squares. We basically have the option between squares and circles. And calm 
is shades of green, heat is shades of red, and default is shades of blue in the apex blue theme. My gutter is the space between my squares. So let's change it to column, square, and gutter, and we see we've got some green with some large spacing. We'll jump back in and we'll change that to heat circle and we'll make this really big. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Starting with a blank file, I go into layout mode and you may need to show your objects pane. You want to make sure that the add on tab is selected and then press the plus sign. We go to our JavaScript grouping and we click the calendar heat map. It shows us a sample, what it'll look like, and it tells us it's going to add some tables, some layouts, and some scripts. If we look at our tables, we see that it put a heat map table and some sample data. Now, to install this on our layout, we simply click it and drag it on. And if we want to include a query, we'd click in fields and we'd navigate to our heat map. Select our query field and drag that on. If we'd like to create a button, we could simply click on the configurator, hold down the option key. Now we need to just do some quick modifications. We'll change the icon and we'll switch the script over to the heat map refresh script. Also, we'll go into the optional script parameters and we'll get rid of this JSON object. And now we see we have some sample data. Let's go over how to configure the query field. You can do the exact same thing with a button, but I think the best way to do this is to use a script trigger. So we're gonna go set up the script trigger and we're gonna check on object exit. So we have the heat map add-on and then inside of that we have a public and a private folder. Private are scripts that are used to create the add-on, so just don't worry about those. Inside the public we have buttons, event handlers, and API. And the script that we need is in the API and it's called heat map refresh. Now, in order for the script to work right, it needs to know what web viewer to refresh. And it's gonna get that by providing the UUID as the optional script parameter. So we can click on edit and we can paste it right here. If you're wondering where did I get that number? Well, if I click on my web viewer, I can copy that value from right here. And then that is the exact value that you paste into the optional script parameter. Now, even though the query field needs to be on the layout to show in the configurator, it does not need to be visible to the user. In the event you're gonna programmatically populate that field, say you're gonna use buttons to put in values from other fields. If you wanna always control how this filters, you could make this a global calculation field and it's looking to other fields to populate it. Another way to control what could be searched is to use a pop-up menu that simply grabs its values from another field, perhaps something like categories, and it would give the user a list of categories to search through. A situation you might encounter with just dragging this field onto the layout is that the default tab configuration could cause when a user presses tab, return, or enter, that they could end up in this field unknowingly, and when they try to click a date, nothing happens. Now simply clicking somewhere else would solve the problem, but they may not know that. One of the things we can do is let's go into layout mode. We go into layout, set tab order, and we'll just clear all of our tabs. So let's leave our query empty. So that way we never accidentally end up in that field, and then we'll click in our button so that we have some place to go when a user hits enter. And then we'll hit OK. And then let's click on the query field and then we'll ensure that tab, return, and enter are checked in our go to next object section. And what this end result is gonna be is if I'm in here and I hit the tab button or I hit the return button or enter, does not cause me to accidentally end up in the query field, thus eliminating this problem, except for when a user has clicked in here on their own and then they're more likely to figure out that's what the problem is. Now I wanna show you one other thing. This button here. So this button is currently set up to run the refresh script, but let's change that 
To run this script, perform query, and we're going to do the same thing, provide it the UUID. And now, it will leave this field for us. So what this script is doing is it's simply committing the record, and that way if the user is still in that query field, it will force the record to save. And then I'm going to perform a script. So basically what I've done is I've created a wrapper. Now you'll notice I'm calling this by name instead of by list, and that is because it's an add-on. Now if I use by list, then FileMaker is going to link to this script using an internal ID, which is how we get the ability to change um, script names on the fly. And this is a good habit to instill when working with add-ons, because if you uninstall that add-on and you reinstall it, which is the process for upgrading it, then it will get a new ID. It might have the same name, but now it has a different ID. So in all the instances where you referenced it, whether it be fields or scripts directly, they'll be broken and you'll have to go in and reselect. But if you do them by name, they won't break. We could tab out and it would find it, or we could be in the field. Now we click this and it committed the record and then it found and it ran that script by name. Well, that is the heat map add-on. I actually found myself entertained by running data sets I had around the house through it and looking for patterns which is an observation. Using the heat map interface allows the end user to use their natural abilities to spot visual patterns, which in the end makes a more useful application. Remember, liking a video is a great way to let us know we are making the content you find useful. And be sure to check the description of the video for a Productive Computing University course on configuring, customizing, and creating your own add-ons. Thanks for watching.